All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, go ahead and type in the chat for me, please, if you if you could hear me. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a camera that's working. Um, while I was doing the computer vision workshop for Show Hacks, um, I had a few issues. All right, cool. I had a few issues with the drivers, so um, yeah, but no worries. All right, cool. Um, but okay, let's go ahead and and get started. Um, So thank you guys for coming to the Arduino uh, simulator workshop. Basically, we're going to be using Thinkercad for this workshop. So uh, I'm going to be teaching you guys um, uh, what an Arduino is and a lot of different stuff that you could do with an Arduino. Um, but for starters, uh, let me explain to you a little bit about uh, what an Arduino is and then some of the stuff that, that you could get from using it. Um, so first of all, an Arduino is basically a microcontroller. Um, it's like a PCB board with a whole bunch of different micro or a microcontroller on it with a few other features that it has. Um, so that's, this allows you to do things like uh, use a button or a sensor. You could even connect the Bluetooth module to it um, and that different stuff like that. Uh, you could even make a program that makes it so that your Arduino could send out a tweet if you wanted to. So there's a lot of different programs and projects that you can make with it. Um, but in terms of why use it, uh, main reason, uh, it's open source. What that means is that you have access to a lot of different schematics and, and PCB designs and the firmware and the software. Um, and that makes it so that people that are interested in that um, are open to those uh, sources and they can develop as they, they would like. Um, also, there's uh, the large community that it, it's behind. So that means that because of the large community that we have, there's a lot of libraries uh, accessible for the Arduino. Um, for example, there's a lot of other um, libraries that allow you to use serial communication. Um, so if you would ideally want to communicate with other microcontrollers or maybe with a different language like Python, uh, you would be able to. It's also a really simple programming environment. Um, Arduino uses its own language, but is uh, based off of C and C++. Um, but the thing about uh, a microcontroller is that if you didn't have an Arduino that had this simple programming environment, uh, hey, hey, Diana, um, if you didn't have this simple programming environment and you were to program on a, on a simple microcontroller, um, you would have to use C and you would have to consider the registers and the memory um, so because of Arduino, we're, we get, we're able to avoid that and it, be able to program and prototype with it a lot easier. It's a lot. It's also a lot more uh, inexpensive um, for the reason that it is open source. There's going to be a lot of cheap clones um, that companies make, and that's good for a lot of people because it means a lot more people can program and develop on them. It's also multi-platform, so you could use it on Windows, Mac, and Linux, um, so there's no issues there. And it's USB programmable, so it's basically a plug and play. So what you guys are going to be learning uh, today, you're going to be learning uh, Arduino development. You're also going to be learning a few of the libraries that Arduino has. Um, oh, we're not going to be learning Python communication. That was actually, wait, am I using the right? Yeah, yeah, OK. So I'm, I must have uh, taken some of the slides from the computer vision workshop, which is why you see here Python communication and computer vision. That was for the computer uh, vision workshop. So uh, disregard that. But basically, we're going to be learning how to use different components on the Arduino, um, things like the ultra distance sensor, uh, servos, uh, potentiometers, that type of stuff. Um, but to, to start off, we're going to go ahead and jump into one of the sketches. So basically for this workshop, we're going to be going through a few sketches using Thinkercad. So you guys have a little bit of a hands-on experience um, with actually programming an Arduino without even having one uh, in front of you. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to sign out so you guys could go ahead and follow along with me. If you haven't made an account, go ahead and make an account. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you have a Google account, you could just sign in with your Google account. Um, we're not going to be using a, any code, so just uh, sign in as if you were doing your own personal project. Wait, did I miss something? 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. I so go ahead and make your 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 profiles. Um, before we start, I am going to talk a little bit about the GPIO pins that the Arduino has. Um, so you're a little bit more familiar once we get to the actual creating of the of the of the circuits. Um, so starting off, we have uh, the power uh, pins uh, that usually power different components uh, that take five volts or three volts, um, so that we don't have to use an external power supply. But we also have the analog in pins. Um, and we have the digital pins, uh, as well as some of the serial communication pins. Um, some of the digital pins do come with PWM, which is a protocol to be able to receive analog signals um, through digital, uh, as well as to output and input. Uh, but we're going to get to that. And we're going to explain to you a little bit about um, what PWM is and how it works. Yeah, so now hopefully you guys have gotten your Thinkercad set up. Uh, let me know in the chat if, if you got that up and then, hey Diego, and then we'll get started on the first, uh, first sketch. Okay, I have this up, ready, ready. Give me one second. One second, I'm typing a message to someone really quickly. All right, so the good thing about Thinkercad, it's uh, mainly a 3D design um, environment that allows you to make 3D models. Um, so as you can see here, a few of the things that I've made, UPE, uh, a fidget spinner. Um, but other than the 3D aspect of Thinkercad, you also have the circuits. Um, so because of this, you're allowed to, you're, you're able to create different circuits, not only using Arduino, but also with that added benefit of having an Arduino though there and having that um, that configuration there. Um, so what we're going to be doing first, uh, let me go ahead and explain to you a little bit of the environment. We're going to have the tools here. Um, we're going to be using the search tool to get out the components that we're going to be using. Um, and, uh, and then we also have here where the code is going to be, start simulation. Um, and that's basically it. So to start off, let's go ahead and get uh, get the first uh, sketch going. So we're going to have an Arduino. We're going to go ahead and grab that, put it onto the board or to the, to the work area. And what we're going to be doing first is going to be a, uh, a blink LED sketch. So some of the methods that we're going to be using for this sketch, uh, we're going to be using the setup. We're going to learn about the setup, the loop. Um, and the digital right as well as the delay. Um, and then I'll get more into how these methods work and, and what we're doing. So first we're gonna go ahead and get the LED. I'm gonna drag the LED over here. Um, and then we're also gonna get an R, uh, a resistor. And we're going to connect the resistor to pin 13. Now, to give you a little bit of insight, the LED light uh, usually has an anode and a cathode. The anode is the positive side of the LED. So that's where you're getting the signal from. Um, since we're getting 5 volts from this pin 13, we're going to have to add a, a resistor here so that the in real life, what would uh, happen if you didn't have a resistor is that the LED would blow up. And we don't want that. So. Um, now that we have that connected, we go over here to the code. Um, now you can see here that we have blocks. This is similar to Scratch. Um, so if you would like to program in Scratch and you're pretty new to programming, maybe you could take a look at that. But for this demo and this workshop, we're going to be using the text. Um, by default, it already comes with the code. But we're going to go ahead and delete that so that we can start over from the beginning. One thing to note is that in real life, let's say you didn't have an LED or a resistor and you just had the Arduino. This light right here that's built into the Arduino is connected to that pin 13. So even if you didn't have an LED and you were to program it, you would see this light come on. 
Um, but yeah, so with the Arduino environment, you're always going to get this setup, uh, which is the setup method and then the loop method. Uh, what the setup allows you to do is an initialize anything that you need to initialize. So when it comes to the pins that you're using, especially the digital pins, you have to make sure that you specify what you're using it for, whether it's going to be an input or an output. In this case, since we're sending a signal to the LED, which is going to power it, is going to be an output. And that method that we're going to use for that is going to be pin mode. And then the parameters that this uh, takes is first the LED that we're, or the digit that we're, or the pin that we're going to be using, and then what we're going to be using it as. In this case, we're going to be using it as an output. And then for the loop, what the loop does is that it's con continuously going to conti uh, run um, over and over again once you start the simulation. So ideally, if you were to create a program where you would have the LED turn on and off, it would constantly do that because of this loop. Um, so in order for us to give the LED or the pin that, uh, that signal, we're going to type digital right. And then we're going to, again, class or declare what pin we're using. Now, whenever you use a digital write um, method, you have two different uh, things that you could give the second parameter, which is going to be a high or a low. In this case, we're going to give it a high. And then what that's going to do is that it's going to turn on the LED by giving uh, it a voltage level. After that, we're going to give a delay. So usually, whenever we have these types of methods, we, we want to give a delay so that we could see um, what's happening to the LED. Um, in this case, we're making it blink, so we want to have that delay there so that we could see that blink. Um, instead of having it go instantly and it won't process correctly, or you won't be able to see it. So after that, we're again going to do the digital right. We're going to select that pin again, and then we're going to go ahead and put low. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn off the LED. Again, we're going to give it a delay. I should mention that. Uh, let me go ahead and read the chat really quick. Where did you get the Arduino from? So you uh, you would uh, close the code uh, button, and then you would search here Arduino. And then it will come up here. It will just click there and drag it onto the board, drag it onto the working space. What name do you do we search for? Yeah, just Arduino. Uh, this isn't C++. It's um, Arduino's own programming language that's based off C and C++. And yeah, no problem. So now that we got some of you guys up to speed, um, so the delay function works in that if you were to put 1,000 in it, it's actually one second. So it works in milliseconds, basically. Um, so yeah, 1,000, it may look like a lot, but it's actually one second. So let's go ahead and start the simulation and see what, what happens. And there we go. We have an LED that's blinking. Can you make the code font? Yes. Let me see if I can do that. Hopefully, that should help. Um, and I think I could maybe. OK, cool. Um, so now that we have that, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, so we got the, the blink LED sketch going. Um, that's the source code. Uh, I, again, I'm going to be post or I'm going to be posting this, these slides on the discord for anyone that wants to reference back to them, uh, later on. Next, what we're going to be doing is the fade LED sketch. Um, in this case, what we're going to be using is the PWM signal. Um, and the methods that we're going to be using for that are the analog right and uh, the for loop. So if you're a little bit new to programming, then you should um, know what a for loop is. If not, then it's fine. We're, we're still going to be explaining to it to you. Um, so before we get started with the sketch, let me explain to you a little bit about the PWM signal and how that works. Um, so that's a, the technique here that we're using is that since the Arduino it isn't an analog device, or it doesn't take analog reads um, directly. 
we have to get the analog read through the digital signals that we're sending it. And how we do that is by um, going through the scale and the range. So if you can see here in the diagram, we have zero volts and five volts. If we have a 0% duty cycle, then we're obviously going to have no signal throughout. Um, but depending on the duty cycle that we give it, we're going to get a specific analog signal um, or an analog output. So if we give it 25%, we're going to get 64. And what's happening is basically um, by changing the rate in which the voltage is changing, we're able to get those values um, to be analog. Um, and the, the method that we're going to be using to, to do this is going to be the analog write to create those PWM signals. Okay, so we're going to be using the same sketch, so no need to change anything. All we're going to be doing is uh, doing stuff to the, to the code. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the Thinkercad. So what we're going to be doing here... Oh, actually, since we are using PWM, we do have to change the pin in which it's connected to. Since 13 isn't a PWM pin, then we can't use it for, for, the, for the fading of the LED. So first stop the simulation, go ahead and delete that by clicking on it and, and clicking on the delete button on your keyboard, and then drag that over to, <clears throat> to 11. So, Again, we have to let that pin know which it, which we're using. In this case, we're using 11. Um, and we're going to be doing an output. So now go ahead and delete whatever is inside your loop. Um, and we're going to be making a, a for loop. So what we're going to be doing with this for loop is that we're going to be going through um, an array, a range of, of numbers. And those numbers are what we're going to be passing to the analog right um, and getting that sort of fade effect from the LED. So we're going to create a, a brightness integer variable. Um, if you don't know what a for loop is, basically the first part of the for loop is initialization. Um, second part is the condition. So we're going to make sure that the brightness is going to be always less than or equal to, or as long as it's less than um, 255 is going to continuously loop over. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to increment that brightness so that we could see the LED increase in brightness. Okay, so once we have that, we're going to create the analog right. And then we're going to set the pin. And then we're going to give that pin that value that we want. And in this case, that's going to be the brightness that we get from the for loop. After that, we're going to give it a delay just so that we can see it more clearly. And then we're going to create another for loop. I don't know what time is it? OK. So again, we're going to do the same thing, but in this case, we're going to initialize that brightness value to 255. Um, the reason we use 255 is because of um, the 5 volt that we have, and that scales back to an analog to 255. So then we're also going to make sure that the brightness is always or going to continue to loop as long as it's greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to decrement, decrement um, that brightness so that we could get the fading of it going down. So again, log right. And then we're going to give it the brightness. And then if this works properly, we put another delay there. We start the simulation. We should see that the LED is going to start to fade to, to low and then fade to high. And that's what we're seeing here. Cool. Uh, let me know if you guys are caught, are caught up with that. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, and then we'll, we'll start on the next sketch.
All right. So what we're going to be doing next after the fade is we're going to be talking about the analog read and how we're going to receive those uh, values um, or actually output those values or input those values into the Arduino essentially with this potentiometer. And we're going to be able to display it onto um, the serial monitor. Um, but essentially, uh, the Arduino works good with the uh, digital signals because like we did uh, previously with the LED, we were able to turn it on and off by using the low and high um, variables. Um, however, we can, uh, in some cases, uh, we, we need more control, right? So you could use a potentiometer or these analog signals for maybe the speed of a motor or dimming a light. Um, and we use these every day in the volume meters that you use in your car and things like that. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to be using here is going to be an analog read so that we could receive that value from the potentiometer. And then we're going to be using the serial um, library to open that serial uh, communication and also print it to the, to the console. Um, to give you a little bit of uh, insight, since the Arduino isn't necessarily an analog device, we also do have to change it from analog to digital. And the way that we do that is with a built-in ADC or analog to digital com converter that the Arduino has um, that uses 10 bits. What this allows us to do is have a resolution that goes from zero to, to 1023. Um, compared to how we had it before um, with the PWM signal, where it was only 8 bits, which is why it goes from 0 to 255. Um, and yeah, we, we like I said, we use analog read to take that signal um, from the potentiometer. So this is the source code that we're going to be using. Um, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and go to Thinkercad and create this. So if you want to delete this, which is what we're going to do because we don't need it right now. First, we're going to go ahead and stop the simulation. We're going to press Shift and then highlight that and then press the Delete button. Um, so go ahead and click on the code, and then we're going to get our potentiometer. Another thing to note is that uh, whenever you have an item in Tinkercad, you could press R on it and it should rotate. So if you want to rotate, since we're going to be using the analog in pins, um, it would be ideal to do that. From there, what we're going to do is that we're going to connect uh, the left pin to 5 volts, the right pin to ground, and then the middle pin to the analog. And uh, that is uh, always how it's going to be um, with the, when it comes to potentiometers, the left and the right are going to be um, power and ground. And if we want to also, we can color code these wires so that it's uh, more understanding. Um, but this is basically the setup. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and code this. Again, you can go ahead and delete the stuff that you had inside loop um, and just uh, follow along. So when it does when it does come to these uh, using potentiometers, we have to make sure that we open that serial port. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to do a serial dot begin, and then we're going to give it a number of ninety six hundred. What this number is is a bad rate. It basically says the uh, it tells you how many bits per second or bytes per second that you would need. Um, but in this case, we're not, it's not going to be like a huge thing to, to consider. Um, and again, we have to make sure that we tell the pin what we're going to be using it as. So we're going to do pin mode and we're going to be using the A0, uh, pin again, uh, we don't necessarily need to do this in this case because send these analog pins are exclusively used for analog. Um, but we could also use these as digital pins if we would want to. We would just have to make sure to say that in the code. 
So we're going to make sure to let the code know or the Arduino know that we're using that as an uh, input. And then within the loop, we're going to go ahead and get that center value. We're going to create a variable. Uh, I forgot to initialize this, so I'm going to go ahead and initialize this out here. Um, and then we could just make it initialize to zero, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to be doing that once we get into the loop. Um, so once we do that, we're going to go ahead and make sure to assign that value, whatever the analog potentiometer is reading. So we're going to use that read function and uh, put it to that pin that we are using. After that, we're going to go ahead and print it to the um, console or the serial monitor. So we're going to do serial.print. Fine. And then we're going to place that variable that we got there so that we could see the values of the potentiometer as we move it. Okay, let's go ahead and start initial. Uh, what, what happened? Pen mode. Oh, it can't be capital. Okay, we have the simulation going. Let's go ahead and open the serial monitor and let's move the potentiometer and see the values that we're getting. And as you can see, um, we're getting from zero to 1,023 because of those 10 bits that we have from the A to D converter that the Arduino has. Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing next is that we're gonna be looking at servo motors. Um, and the cool thing about servo motors um, is that they have a few things in them. It, it also has a potentiometer in it, and I'm going to explain to you why. So let me go to the servo slide. So what is a servo? A servo is basically a DC motor um, that has a gearbox like you see here on the top. And then on the shaft, it has a potentiometer. Um, and the reason that we have this potentiometer here is so that we could read the angles that the that this DC motor is making with the, the gearboxes. Um, and the reason we would want that is so that we could create torque um, and have angled uh, movements. Um, in this case, with the servo, we get an angle from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. And this is a... Uh, uh, one of the first sketches that we're going to do, we're going to make sure to have the servo uh, move on itself so that you guys could see that angle changing. Um, so let's go back to the Thinkercad. Let's stop the simulation. Um, we're, we could leave the servo here for now since we are going to use it uh, to then move the servo uh, in real time. Um, but initially, what, what we're going to want to do is that we're going to Take the servo, we're going to drag it over here, again rotate it so that we have it easily configured. So the way that we connect the servo is, uh, wait this isn't the correct one, is it? I, this should be, oh yeah it is, it is. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit tired already but uh, so we're going to connect I don't know why it's not color coded. It would definitely be a lot easier. Oh, there we go. I'm stupid. Um, but yeah, so the brown wire is always going to be the ground wire. So we could go ahead and connect that as well to the ground wire here. And then the middle wire is always going to be the power wire. Um, and the servos take five volts. So we could though go ahead and give it five volts as well. And then this signal. Uh, this is a signal wire, uh, which is where we connect it to the servo pin. In this case, we're going to be using pin 3 because it is a PWM pin. So now that we have that connected, we can go ahead and, um, and start to code. So initially what we're going to do is that we're going to make it so that the servo can move. 
Um, so we could leave that serial begin uh, function because we're going to be using that again. But in this case, whenever we're dealing with servos, we do have to include a library. And the library that we're going to be including is the servo.h. So we'll put a hashtag at the top to include servo.h. Um, ideally, this isn't the way that you would do it in a real servo. Um, it's not too different or not too difficult. You could probably look it, uh, look it up online if you are interested in how to get those libraries. How do you rotate? Uh, you rotate by clicking on the component that you want and then pressing the R button on your keyboard. Um, so yeah. So now that we have uh, the serial, we're going to go ahead and create an object. Um, so whenever you're dealing with servos, you have to create a servo object. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and name it uh, servo my servo. Um, and then from there, we're going to change the pin mode. And we're not going to use pin mode in this case, since we're using a servo and we're using the servo or library. What we're going to do is we're going to take our object, our server object, and we're going to use the attach uh, function. And since the pin that we connected it to it is three, we're going to use that three number for the attach. From there, we're going to go ahead and use the, again, the servo object, and we're going to write to that servo. And the value that we're putting is the degrees that we want it to have. So initially, we, we're going to go ahead and make it zero, and then we're going to give it a delay of one second. And then again, we're going to use the servo.write. Uh, and we're going to give it 180 so that we could get that full uh, range of motion with the servo. Make sure you're, you don't have any typos. Try to make it look pretty if you can. And then let's give it another delay. And then let's run it. Uh, it looks like I forgot. Yeah. So make sure you put a semicolon, not a colon. And let's run it again. Make sure it's working. And there we go. As you can see, the servo is going from 0 to 180. I think if we were to give it a little bit more delay, we would be able to see it a lot better in terms of the full range of motion. Yeah, never mind. Oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. So that's pretty cool. Um, now we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to take that same servo and then we're going to use uh, the analog read that we're getting from the Arduino and make it so that it can program the ser or adjust the servo's degree uh, the way that we want it. Um, Again, this is a, the code that we're going to be using for that. Uh, and I'll post this in the Discord later on for you guys to reference back to it if you if you would like. Um, but the setup code is going to be the same. The only thing that's going to be changing is that now we're going to be taking that analog read that we got from the other sketch that we did. And the pin that we gave it. And then we're going to print it. So we, we, we know that it is indeed getting some sort of value. And um, what we're going to be doing here is that this is what, how we're going to make it so that we can take that analog read and give it to the servo or, and, and pass that, that value to the servo. Um, so like we did in the previous sketch, we used the MyServo write to change the angle that the servo was using. What we're going to be doing here differently is that we're going to be using a map function. 
Um, and the reason that we use this map function is because since the, the, the values that we're using uh, have different um, ranges, so like I showed you previously, the range for the analog uh, read was from 0 to 1023, right? Um, but the value that um, we're giving the servo is from 0 degrees to 180. So essentially what this map function is doing is that it's taking the analog input and scaling it down so that we could use it as an angle. And then we're going to go ahead put the semicolon and then give it a delay. All right, it looks like we're good to go. Let's go ahead and run it. And again, some errors, but hey, who, who doesn't get any errors? Uh, void loop analog signal not declared. Oh, so I forgot to declare it up here. Since we're taking the integer value, we need to make sure to give that variable a, um, a declaration. Uh, what now? Signal, signal. Analog was not declared. Analog. Oh, wow. Uh, where did, okay. And now I think it should work. Okay, let's open up the serial monitor and let's move this. And as you can see, it kind of works. Um, I believe if I change this to 180 and we get it to go in the opposite direction, we could see how it, it works in that way. Okay, yeah, and as you can see, as we move the potentiometer, the servo moves. Pretty cool, right? Awesome. So um, we're getting towards the end of the workshop. Um, we have one more sketch to finish, uh, and then I'll open it up to any questions that you guys have. Obviously, if you guys have any questions while we are doing these uh, sketches, you can more than I'm more than happy to answer those questions that you may have. Um, but the last sketch we're going to be using an ultrasonic distance sensor. Um, so what this what we're going to be doing with this is that what this distance sensor does it sends out a signal, and then once it receives that signal back, it takes the duration that in which it, it received that signal um, and changes that to, to uh, a distance with a calculation that we're going to be talking about. Um, but since uh, a micro, uh, an ultrasonic distance sensor uh, works in microseconds, we're going to be using this delay microseconds method, uh, as well as the pulse in to, to recognize when the distance sensor received that input. Um, so the way that it works is it uses ultrasonic waves to determine the distance of the objects. Um, so as you can see, the trigger pin, uh, it will send a 10 microsecond pulse. Um, and then it will transmit those eight pulses. And then if it, uh, it detects an object, it will send the, the signals back to the distance sensor with the echo pin. Um, and that's why we're going to be using the pulse uh, method with the echo pin. So essentially, the echo pin is what receives the data um, from that distance that we're, or not the distance, but the duration in which the signal hits an object and comes back. And to explain it a little bit better, we have this diagram right here. Um, so essentially what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be sending a signal to an object. Once that signal gets hit by the object, the signal is going to come back and towards the distance sensor. Um, and this is also an example of how that works exactly. So initially, we're going to want to make sure that there is no trigger that's being sent. Um, and then we're going to want to send that signal ourselves. Um, it's going to be transmitted, and then we're going to receive that back once it hits the object. And this is the duration in which it, it took to receive it. Um, so then we're going to use that distance to get the, or that duration to get the distance. Um, and that's what, what what's being displayed here, how, how you calculate the distance. Um, and we're going to be using the constant of speed of sound, um, which is 
343 uh, microseconds. Um, and then we're going to divide that by 2. Um, and that should give us the distance by using the duration that we get. So let's go ahead and create the sketch. Um, once we create the sketch, we will go ahead and program it uh, in the way that I explained it to you. So let's go back to Thinkercad. Let's go ahead and hold shift and then first stop the simulation, hold shift, highlight all this stuff, delete it. Again, hold shift and delete this stuff right here. So what we're going to be using for this sketch is just the ultra distance sensor. So go ahead and click on code and search that component up. So what we're going to be using in this case is the HD SRL4. Um, and like I explained, we have the trigger pin and then the echo pin. And then obviously we need a power of this, so that's where the VCC comes from and the ground. So let's go ahead and connect this. The ultra distance sensor uses five volts. So go ahead and connect those five volts to VCC. And before I do this, I kind of want to rotate it this way. So you have kind of the understanding that it's going in that direction. I know this isn't the prettiest, but hey, it's okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and connect the ground. And for the trigger pins and the echo pins, in this case, we're going to be connecting it to pin 5 and 6. Uh, and the reason we connect it to those pins again is because they are PWM, and the, and the values that we're receiving are um, in analog. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so now that we have that connected, let's go ahead and color code this um, so that it's a lot easier to understand and read. Uh, and I did that wrong. So we have VCC ground and then trigger and echo. OK, so now that we have this connected, Let's go ahead and open the code. So when it comes to um, using these types of pins with a component like this, we want to go ahead and define these um, variables and these values um, because we, we wouldn't want these values to be used for anything else. Um, so in this case, we're going to we're going to create a variable. We're going to define a variable and make it equal to six so that whenever we use that trigger variable, um, we're ensuring that we're not using anything else and anything else in the pin in the program is configured to some other pin if needed. Boombox with hands hugging the board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I didn't see that, but yeah. Um, so now that we have those defined, again, we're going to put five for the echo pin. Make sure you guys have those connected correctly. Um, and then we're, again, going to be using the serial communication so that we could print the, the value that we're getting from the distance and, and print it out to the monitor. So we have to go ahead and make sure that we Tell the code what we're using these pins for. So for the echo pin, the echo pin sense where that's a trigger pin, we're uh, sending those signals out. That's going to be an echo output pin. And for the echo pin, it's going to be an input because that's when we receive that uh, signal back and take that, that uh, duration and then calculate the distance. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be creating or er, coding a digital write. And then we're going to be doing that to the to the trigger pin and we're going to be sending it to low. The reason we do that is because we want to ensure that there is no signals coming out of the distance sensor when we first uh, initialize the program. 
So again, we're going to be using the microseconds command since this stuff works in microseconds. We're going to be giving that uh, a value of two. And then we're going to, again, give it a digital right of the same pin, but in this case, we're going to be giving it a high value. And the reason we do that is because now we want to send that signal to somewhere and see if there is, in fact, an object or there isn't. And in this case, we're going to be giving it 10 microseconds. And then we again turn it off so that we can stop that signal from being sent. And then check to see if there is a receiving signal on the other side. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a double. A double is basically another form of a integer, more like a float, um, since we're using a duration or we're getting a duration. And then, like I said, we're going to be using the echo, the pulse in, uh, with the echo pin. And we're going to put that too high. So what this uh, command specifically is doing is that it's making it so that this echo pin is, in fact, receiving data. Um, and then we're capturing that um, information in the duration variable so that we could then calculate it. So then we'll again do a double. And then this is where we're going to calculate that duration to find the distance. So if you remember what the formula was, it was the duration divided by 2. And then we would multiply that by the constant um, of the speed of sound, which is 0 0.0343. Okay, we're pretty much almost uh, there. All we have to do now is print all this data out so that we could um, see that it's in fact reading something. The distance is, this is just a print statement so that we have things more readable. And then we're going to go ahead and print that distance to the monitor. And the distance that we're reading it, since we're um, scaling the constant down a little bit, as well as the, the units of measurement that we're using for the duration, we're going to be printing this in, or the value that we're getting is in centimeters, essentially. So then we also want to put that there so that it looks you know, nice. And finally, we're going to give it a delay. In this case, since it's not really uh, impacted by the ultra distance, the delay is just um, it's a number that we have there so that we could create some a lag, not lag, but like some time for the processes to take place. So looks like we have everything set up correctly. Let's go ahead and start the simulation and see what happens. Um, capital letter or lowercase. Okay. And serial print. What am I doing wrong here? Um, I don't see what the issue is. Expect semicolon where? Oh, here it is. Okay, um, so it looks like it's running. Let's go ahead and open to the serial communication or the serial monitor, and we'll see that it's actually receiving a distance. And if we click on here, and if we move this value, it will in fact change here on the serial monitor. If we go down and look at the new values that are being processed. Pretty cool, right? And you could also see it here. Uh, it makes it pretty user friendly for you to be able to see what it is that you're getting.
And then essentially from this, you would be able to create different projects. So one of the projects that we did for UP Make was a object avoidance robot. And the ultra distance sensor was a big part of that um, because that was basically what told us if there was an object in front of us and not. And then depending on those values, we were able to change the direction um, of the DC motors that control the wheels essentially. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff that you could do with Arduinos. Again, this is very basic. I, I wouldn't say this is very basic, but this is the starter, uh, I guess, course in terms of how an Arduino works and how you can program one. And, uh, and yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the workshop. Um, I'm going to open the floor up for any questions that you guys may have. So the, the big thing about Arduinos is the GPIO pins that it, it has. So the pins that it has allows you to interact with different components in the real world. Um, so as an example, another workshop that we had here for, for Shell Hacks was the Arduino Computer Vision Workshop. It's pre-recorded, so you could go watch that right now. You would need a little bit of uh, some equipment for that, but if you want to learn the, the concepts, you can still go check that out. And essentially what you could do is create a ser servos that connect to a camera that move and track a face. Um, it's, if you go watch the, the, the video, then you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, but there's a lot of cool things that you could make um, when it comes to a lot of robots, drones, um, connecting different components and sensors um, and taking that data and then analyzing it to maybe make another process to give you um, some examples. But yeah, um, that was the Arduino simulator Tinkercad workshop. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and type it in the chat. Or if you want to hit me up later in Discord, you can contact me in Discord or any of the other moderators or, or people there. Would you use that on a drone recommend? meant better sensors so you could definitely use an arduino on the drone um and then you could use the arduino to then communicate with different sensors um i i do know that there are different microcontrollers that you could use on the drone that may be better depending on the use case that you're using it for um but starting off if you're not super familiar with programming microcontrollers arduino is definitely the way to go um especially if you're new to embedded systems and that type of stuff. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Um, would you use that on Arduino? Or oh, sorry, would you use that on a drone? Yeah, so I would definitely say that you could use uh, different sensors on the drone, um, but you would definitely need some sort of uh, brain to take all that data that you're getting from that those sensors that you're using. I'm doing it right now with my Arduino. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it, you see an example right there. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with Arduinos. Um, another example could be um, maybe taking, so one of the, to give you some, I guess, uh, insight, there's a, a senior project that FPL came to this our senior class about creating a a robot that would climb up a pole, take data from the pole. Um, since FPL uses electricity with all these poles, um, they would take these data from the sensors and then um, send it back to a computer. And you would be able to do that with an Arduino if you were to connect a Wi-Fi module or a Bluetooth module to it. Um, and also with the uh, Raspberry Pi is a, another really cool embedded system to program with. So the difference between the Raspberry Pi and, the, and an Arduino is that with an Arduino, um, you're programming it with your computer and you still have GPIO pins, which is similar to a Raspberry Pi. But when it comes to um, a Raspberry Pi, you are using its own OS. Um, at the, and it does have uh, a lot more processing power because it ha actually has a CPU and it's running an OS on it. When it comes to an Arduino, you're connecting an Arduino to your computer and then programming it through there. Um, 
and then uploading that program to the Arduino. So you don't essentially need a computer, but when it comes to programming it, you, you will need it. Yeah, 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 especially with the Python. Um, it's really good. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and end the workshop now, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you guys got a lot of information from this. Um, but again, if you have any questions, make sure to hit us up on the Discord. Um, and also, we have a, a hardware track chat there in the Discord, too, if you want to talk in there. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, the recordings, uh, they will most likely go on the UPA YouTube. Um, but uh, we will make sure to let you know about that in the Discord. So just watch out for the Discord. Uh, as soon as these recordings are processed, um, they should be going up. So you'll be definitely getting this um, there. Sounds good? All right. Well, again, I want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, and I hope to see you guys later on this weekend at Show Hacks. Make sure to check out all the other workshops that we're having this weekend. There's some pretty cool stuff that you're going to be learning. No problem, Raphael. I'll see you guys. <laughs>